What is going on everyone? My name is Jared and I am from TechWorks. So I'm sure it was expected. I obviously was having to do this comparison between the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2S here on the left and the OnePlus 6 here on the right. So why am I doing this comparison? I've beat my head against the wall with the OnePlus 6 already, but these phones come in at about the same price and they offer very similar, yet some very different experiences. So if you've watched my two videos so far and the Mi Mix, it is a very different phone, different from what I've seen and probably different than what a lot of you have seen here in the United States, especially if you're through, if you're watching from other countries, this might not be as foreign to you, but for my US fans, North American fans, it's different. And the OnePlus 6, you all know and love what the OnePlus 6 is about. It is experience and how it offers a basically near stock experience of Android with some very useful features going on. So getting the specs out of the way, they are both running Snapdragon 845s. They both have high amounts of RAM. This one is six, this one is eight. Uh, this is with 128 gigs of storage as well as this. So they're evenly matched there, different so far as RAM. Both offer quick charging technologies. OnePlus has its patented dash charge one of the fastest in the market and xiaomi has quick charge as well as wireless charging through its back so biggest difference the layout of how the phones look we have a more i guess standard android style with the cameras lined up with the fingerprint sensor right here and this would be a more iphone clone style with your dual camera set up in this corner and the fingerprint reader in the middle Big difference here, before we get into the fronts and the software, is this is a ceramic back phone, which I talked about before, which is a lot harder than this Gorilla Glass back here on the OnePlus. Little different design. You can feel the weight difference from ceramic to glass. Ceramic is much heavier, and the, the phones that have ceramic so far was like the Essential phone, this phone. There were certain... Uh, some other ones throughout the past few years that have tried to use ceramic in the back. It's different, it's premium, it's heavy, and it definitely costs more than glass. Camera setups are ultimately similar yet different. You have the telephoto lens and the regular lens. Here you have both pretty much the same lens. One is helping with low light, the other is doing the main shooting experience. Fingerprint readers on both are extremely fast extremely accurate. OnePlus went against the circular to make it not an exclamation point. And Xiaomi has, I would say, one of the fastest in the market, just in general. On the sides, Xiaomi, pretty standard, power, volume rocker. On the OnePlus, you have power and alert slider, which is a very unique uh, feature for Android, at least. Um, reminds me a lot of the Apple uh, mute switch, which I do love very much. Top, nothing uh, really crazy there. OnePlus does this design, it is shiny on the sides, where Xiaomi is more matte with the metal. But uh, OnePlus always has this patented, uh, I guess, horizon line. It's a feature of theirs they've always put in their phones. Gives it a little edge, I would say. You notice it more on the bottom than anything. On the bottom, again, pretty standard affair. OnePlus, you have your USB Type-C, downward firing speaker, headphone jack, Xiaomi, just the USB-C and downward firing speaker. On the left side, you have your SIM trays on both and the volume for OnePlus. So here's the front. This is where it gets different. So both of these phones offer a full screen experience, both doing it a little bit different. Let me turn that brightness up there. Actually, for comparison's sake, why don't we just, we'll just crank them up. So they both offer a very different experience. OnePlus embracing the notch gives you that notch style up in the top, housing your earpiece speaker and selfie camera all up in there. You can turn it off with software. And at the bottom, you have basically no bezel on the bottom and sides. Uh, pretty small down here for your software buttons. Xiaomi, 
doing their different thing. Uh, one of the only phones so far of 2018 that's going as full a screen as possible with as little bezel as possible and no notch. So there is no cutout at the top. You have a tiny earpiece up here, which is pretty good for call quality. And then you actually have your selfie camera at the bottom. And if you wanna know more about how that works, look at my other video, my more in-depth look at the Mi Mix 2S, but basically, long and the short of it, taking selfies from the camera app, you're gonna go upside down. And if you're using it for social media and vlogging, well, it's gonna kind of be hard, especially with Snapchat, because it's not gonna realize it's got a flip orientation. They are both rocking a 1080p screen. Uh, personally, they both look great. I'm gonna show you a difference in colors. Uh, if you look at the top bar right up in here for Gmail, the OnePlus certainly has more saturated colors when it comes to the reds, I think, specifically. Um, I'm not saying the Xiaomi looks bad, but I guess I like the color representation of the OnePlus better. This certainly is probably one of the best 1080p screens I've seen as a whole, uh, as far as you know, viewing angles, watching movies, not having to worry about the cutout, things of that nature. And I'm sure if I adjusted in the display settings, I could make that pop more. But going for your default, uh, your default profile for color, I would pick the OnePlus colors over the Xiaomi. So going right along, seeing the hardware is basically the same design, very similar yet very different. OnePlus is thinner and a little taller and the Xiaomi is a little thicker and a little heavier. So there is that. If I'm going on design, personally, I think I go for uniqueness. So I would say the Xiaomi has my vote, even though it's a little uh, Apple inspired on the back. I think this is much more unique now in this today's age than a sea of notches, which is certainly happening in the Android landscape. This will blend in with phones that look similar like the LG G7 uh, and various other, <laughs> other phones that have the notch, the tiny notch in the top. Software is really where these phones start to get far apart. So Xiaomi has MIUI, a skinned version of Android, which relies heavily on similarities to iOS, whether it's your icons, uh, having no app drawer, how you move them, the little like wiggle things, things like that. A lot of things are pulled from iOS and that's fine. I don't really hate it. It reminds me a lot of EMUI from Huawei. OnePlus goes very bare bones. When you get this phone, you might get 10 apps on it, 10, 12 apps. You basically get nothing, there is no overlap, there is no dual services, you get core functionality and then you make it your own uh, <laughs> from there. OnePlus has a huge developer support, uh, custom ROM community, mod community, is basically the new nexus of phones being that Pixel has gone astray from its developer, developer friendly roots. Uh, so the software experience, I prefer stock Android over anything. Some skins I don't mind. Um, I don't mind MIUI. It just took a lot for me to get used to and a lot for me to learn because it is so very different than stock Android. So even just looking at the settings, you know, OnePlus is very similar to how the Pixel looks. Um, again, I keep drawing similarities to Huawei because they're, they're coming from the same area. So they have to appease the same crowd but it's very different. Things are in a lot of different areas, like about phones at the top, about phones at the bottom. Not that that's you know, monumentally different, but how you do your system updates, all that stuff is just a different step in between. Um, Xiaomi has a lot of its own core services, like it's, uh, see you have your airdrop, your security, your themes, music, video, cleaner, screen recorder, all that stuff that is baked into the Mi UI, its own browser, notes, messaging. Um, reminds me a lot of, you know, what Samsung does, having dual apps, you know, dual functionality. You don't get Google Dialer or anything like that. OnePlus is obviously has its own stuff, but the, basically the only things that you get from OnePlus that is not normal, uh, the Google apps that you would get on your Pixel is your phone, which is a little different, not very. Your messaging, which finally supports group messaging camera app and your gallery app. Other than that, you are basically rocking straight Google Apps, Google Calendar, Google Calculator, Clock, 
all of that is basically the same. Oh, clock, actually, no, clock is one plus still. But uh, you get the drift. More or less everything is the stock version. Mi Mix, not as much. Everything is Xiaomi branded, Xiaomi made in-house, meaning in the US, it's hard to use its own SMS service. It makes it difficult to use some of its features like me messaging. Uh, again, look back to the other video for a little more detailed explanation of such. But the apps that do work, work very well. And they do look very nice. They are polished. They are nice and clean um, for whatever. Oh, airplane mode. Duh. Uh, you do have to find a different SMS to use group messaging on this phone. Your gallery app, you know, just as basic, as, as similar as it normally would. You get your Mi backup, your Xiaomi backup, similar to like Samsung Cloud or, you know, High Cloud, things of that nature. And again, OnePlus doesn't really have all those fancy software features. What you do get is some nice customization with your buttons, your gestures, your status bar. You can customize your alert slider, your display settings. And that's basically it. You know, you guys know what the OnePlus is about. So I'm not really going to dive deep into its different software. And of course, you can change the software because of the strong developer community. This, there, there is one. It's just certainly not as strong. So... Price, they both came in, uh, this phone came in at 550, uh, and it was like $600 shipped, insured, and here from Hong Kong. And this phone was, I believe, $608 with two cases, uh, FedEx priority shipping, which took about three days. This one took about eight to 10 days. Pretty much equals here. Now, these were more or less the mid-road models of both. This one you could have got 64 gigs. This one you could have also got 64 gigs with its top of the end being 256. And that's, you know, the boss in both of these phones. So they're competing on a very, very similar level. Um, and what sets them apart, I would guess, I would say, is user experience, the, the sense of value for the money and what you're getting. If you're somebody who really likes to mess with the phone to change things about it, to do your custom ROMs, all that stuff. Well, OnePlus is certainly going to be your answer. You're not going to be unsatisfied. It's fast. Everything about it seems fast, no matter if you're switching apps, opening your camera, going to your gallery, opening your text, whatever. Everything is very fast, fluid, and smooth, and you'll probably never have a hiccup. Same with the Xiaomi. Everything is, is certainly fast. You have no issues. You can bounce from app to app. No problem. Really, either of them are great, speedy experiences. If you want a no-nonsense experience that you're going to have an easy time dealing with here in the United States, 100% OnePlus all the way. That looks super washed out. <laughs> there, I'll turn it down. If you're looking for a very unique, different experience here in the U.S., I would 100% say the Xiaomi. And the only reason I say that is because it is different for us in the United States. It is different for us in, the, in the North America. And honestly, there's a lot of things about it that make it seem polished. So I showed off my other video. After you leave apps that Xiaomi makes, like its camera, its phone, gallery, it has little animations, little cool little closing animations, which I like. Your weather app does change with the forecast, tells you the current temperature. OnePlus does have that. It shows today's weather as cloudy. Um, if you watch the clock on, on the Xiaomi, it has like a little flip board effect. You can change your transitions. And a lot of that does, you know, you can change with stock launchers or different launchers and different icon packs and whatever. They both have a shelf, I will call it, because it isn't Google Now, which I would prefer but you have your stocks, your recent apps. Xiaomi has, you can do your calendars, um, apparently a World Cup widget, and shortcuts. Very similar. Uh, they're kind of sort of functional. I don't use them too much. OnePlus, again, you have 8.1 Oreo, which you have all your little quick toggles like you're used to. Xiaomi running at 8.0 has none of those, which doesn't make sense. And that's something that you got to get used to. And Xiaomi, being a global ROM, you're going to get updates uh, when the global version does. So 
MIUI 10 was announced uh, last week. I tried to sign up for the beta and you might get that, which is still based on 8.0. OnePlus has certainly been getting better with its updates, with its security, with things like that. They do update it pretty frequently. The camera, personally, based on personal experience, I would pick the Xiaomi because it has the AI camera. It does have the telephoto lens, which does help with zoom instead of relying on digital zoom. And to me, I think the colors, the pictures, the detail comes out better than the OnePlus. That's not saying the OnePlus is a bad experience. I did the whole camera comparison with the biggest phones in the, in the game, and it really does hold up extremely well, especially coming in at the price. I think either of these phones, if you had it for two, three, four years, you're going to have a great experience. It's fast. There's enough headroom with RAM and things like that that you're not going to have a problem running heavily apps, games, light photo editing. You're going to have solid battery life due to the, the different cost savings and, I guess, battery savings features. Both both have uh, MIUI heavily closes apps. OnePlus has just oodles of RAM to store its recent apps in, so it doesn't nearly close as much. They both have the quick charge. OnePlus, you get a little bit of water resistance, nothing official. Xiaomi, you get none. Keep that in mind. This one is, you know, what they would say, splash proof. So if you get in the shower, people have showed it going in a little bit of water, maybe the toilet, uh, a puddle, you're gonna be good. Xiaomi, probably not so much. There is no water resistance. If you want a headphone jack, again, OnePlus. This one does come with a dongle. So you gotta live that dongle life or use Bluetooth headphones. So at the end of the day, which one am I going to pick? Well, for my friends here in the U.S., I would say to save yourself some headaches, to save yourself from having to worry about uh, messing with APN settings and things of that nature. OnePlus, you pop in, for me, at least my T-Mobile SIM card, I got my Wi-Fi calling, voiceover LTE, no issues whatsoever, just plug it in, good to go. Xiaomi, I had to mess with it, I had to customize it, I had to change some APN settings to get it to be exactly the way I needed it to be. But if you're looking for a very unique and ex different experience that you're not going to get from any other phone in the U.S., Xiaomi Mi Mix. If you're picking the two based on camera, Xiaomi Mi Mix. And personally, my choice for design would be the Xiaomi Mi Mix. Now, you know, take that as you will. A lot of people ask me which one I prefer, which one should you choose? And I always answer with, well, what are you going to do? That really is going to classify which one you should pick. If you're a photography buff, which has under 600 bucks to spend on a phone, I would absolutely go this one. If you're someone who really kind of wants the uniqueness, I'd go with this one. If you want someone who's going to tinker and mess with ROMs and kernels and everything else about the phone, OnePlus, 100% all the way. Either one of these you'll be happy with. Either one of these is going to be a great experience. And I don't think they'd, either of them would let you down at all. So anyway, that was my quick comparison of these two phones that are very different and very much the same at the same time. If you're gonna buy either of them, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. You're gonna have a great experience. They're gonna last you several years, no problem. Um, it's, good, it's good to see some competition elsewhere for phones here, because you know what? The expensive phones, the $1,000 phones, I hate to see it. I hate having the prices that high for a lot of people who can't buy them without financing. They can't buy them without getting deals. You know, these $500 phones that are doing it all really are uh, showing manufacturers like Apple, Samsung, whomever, that you don't have to have a amazingly overpriced phone to get a great experience. So there you have it. My name is Jared, and I will see everyone in the next video.